Hello everyone, it's Fairykin, and welcome to my first full face-up on YouTube. This is going to be a tea fairy woodland sprite themed doll, which I'm, if I'm completely honest, is kind of a weird concept, but hey, I had fun with it, so whatever. I will be using the Venus McFlytrap doll from Monster High for this custom because she has really elven fairy-like features, and the leaf details on her ears and hands are a bonus. So first off, I start on the reroot, which consists of hooking small strands of hair onto the end of a needle that has been cut at an angle and plugging them into the head one at a time. This is a very time-consuming process, but I prefer this over making a wig. It's so fluffy, and there's so much, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. Grab some fabric glue and just glue it on the inside of the head to make sure it all sticks in there. Then I give her a quick spray of Mr. Super Clear and move on to the blushing. The blushing is super easy and fun, but it gives a lot of life to the doll. It just makes everything look more finished and put together. While working on the face, I was thinking about what kind of expression I wanted to give her. I wanted her to be relaxed as well as cheerful, so I gave her a kind of blend between excitement but also chill. You'll notice that she just randomly appears with eyelashes right here, and that's because toward this part, the sealant like started to peel up around her eyes, and I'm not sure what happened, but I had to repair it off of camera because it was too delicate, I couldn't concentrate on filming things and repairing things at the same time. I put a gloss varnish over the eyes and lips just to make her look alive. And this is one of my favorite details just because it's so simple and takes a lot less time than everything else, but it kind of finishes it. But she can't stay naked forever, so I thought I would try on this really pretty dress that I just found in my stuff. It has cool panels on it, but it's really too big and looks kind of weird, so I decided I would make something instead. I made this off camera and decided I liked the skater style, but I would make something like it in this patterned fabric. I went through my doll clothes and decided which styles I liked, but none of them were really, I don't know, none of them were really cutting it for me until I found this one. Now this is one of my favorite dresses in my collection and I really didn't want to rip it up to make a pattern with it, but sacrifices must be made. Sacrifices were made, and it's okay, I can repair it later, but I'm sad. I start making the pattern by outlining the pieces of fabric that I cut out onto a piece of paper, outlining those onto the piece of fabric I'm going to work with, cutting them out, and sewing them all together. I finish the dress, and I like it a lot but it's missing something, so I added a bit of lace on the bottom. I also added beads around the waistline and the neckline because no one told me not to. I decided to accessorize that I should give her a bag that she could hold all her teas and whatnot in, so I took a scrap piece of foam and textured it, cut them into little patterned pieces, painted them brown, sewed them all together, and now it's a little messenger bag. I gave it some dry brushing just to make it look a little bit weathered. I added a few small embellishments like the straps and the star button, and I molded some teeny tiny leaves out of polymer clay. They're supposed to look like green tea leaves, but I'm not sure if I succeeded. I also made an unrealistically small teacup and attached both of those to the bag. Alright, let's shift to the shoes. I found these laying around and decided, hey, why not completely encompass them in epoxy sculpt? 
If you don't know, epoxy sculpt is a material used for sculptures, and when you mix the equal halves together, it can form a strong bond between itself and the material it is attached to. And as it cures, it becomes workable, and you can add small details into it like textures and whatnot. I paint the finished shoes, add dry brushing to bring out the details, and call them complete. <laughs> this part, I'm really excited about. The wings! Now, due to the fact that I got so excited about the materials I would be using, I sort of forgot to film some of the process, but I'll do my best to describe what went down. Okay, so first of all, the material I'm using is called Fantasy Film, and it is so amazing and magical, and what I did is I made a wire in the shape that I wanted, cut out a piece of Fantasy Film that would cover both sides, and ironed them together. This melts the two sides together and adds a cool texture. I proceed to cut the edges as close as I dare, and melt the edges as close to the wire as possible to create a strong seal around the frame. I then attach the wings together with a real real small nut and screw, and then jab the wings into the hole I maliciously drilled into her back and set them in place with epoxy sculpt. This setup for the wings is just a tiny bit bulky, so next time I make wings, I'll probably figure out a new method, but overall, I think they look pretty okay. Now to figure out this massive hair. I started with a small braid in the front, and I parted the hair in three sections in the back, braided those, and I flipped it over itself to make a mini bun, tied it off with some cord, and a little leaf that I sculpted out of polymer clay. And now, my friends, she is complete. I decided to call her Nymphit. Now, the definition of the word Nymphit isn't really a description I would use for one of my dolls, but I thought it was cute as a name, so I kept it. Thank you everyone so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Keep creating, bye!